Hi, um, so I'd like to, this is a GISCOR JASM training. And, um, you know, I want to thank everybody who's here. There's about four or five, maybe seven people in the room. So um, I'm just going to go over, you know, JASM is the professional level tool as close as we get in the OpenStreetMap world. And so it makes sense that people from GISCOR who come, you know, with a high set of skills uh, are focused on the editor that's closest, matches environments that they work with and comes as close to you know professional GIS tools. There's also QGIS, which is an actual open source professional GIS tool. Um, that's something I use about in, in maybe 10% of my work. Like 90% of what I do as far as OpenStreetMap goes, I'm doing using JASM, planning projects, stuff like that. So it's good if you start with JASM. Um, and and I'm not a, I don't have a GIS background, so, um, you know, I'm not going to know a ton of GIS terms, nor do I use any Esri products. Hmm. So you use Esri products and you know what I mean? So you might ask me things that I don't understand because uh, I'm just not super familiar with those tools. But please ask and I'll try and give you, you know, like as close as it comes. If you can tell me what it does, I'll give you as close as how you do it in JASA. That's the best. That's the best I can do. Um, so, you know, this is, I just opened up JASM. I have data downloaded from OpenStreetMap. That's what all of these lines are. Um, I, if I zoom out, typically this is what you're going to see. You're going to see uh, an area with a bunch of data in it, and then you're going to see a lot of hash marks or this, um, you know, this hash marked area around this. This means I don't have data for those parts. So I have data for a pretty big chunk of Florida up here. Um, and what I was in the process of doing was I downloaded essentially the largest amount of data that I can from OpenStreetMap. Um, JASM has a built-in validation process. And so what I did was I, uh, you know, just took this load of data and I ran the validation process on it. And I was going through the 499 warnings that that validation process generated. So it's doing a lot of quality checks on all of the you know, the data that we've generated, and now it's telling me what it can obviously see, um, you know, should be something that you look at. And that's what I was in the process of doing. It gave me one error, which means this is pretty bad. If you know how to fix this, you should. Um, and then it gave me 499 warnings, 300 of which I are, don't apply to me, or I don't know how to fix them. So I would not be paying attention to those. In this particular instance, we were quickly fixing roads, so that the routing software worked, which is like, oh, nodes aren't near each other, or two roads cross and they don't share a node. Uh, making simple fixes like that has a dramatic impact on routing software, which is what OpenStreetMap data gets used for a lot. So I was just going through this validation process. Um, you know, so the UI is like this, there's downloaded data. The other thing that's really important for JASM um, are these panels that are over on the right-hand side. And this UI is not great, but there's a set of buttons over here. Um, this is actually a divider. This, this double thing is a divider. These are tools and actions. And then everything below this turns on and off a panel that we're over here looking at. So I have the validation results panel up, and this is the check. So if I, you know, if I click on that, it makes it disappear. So you'll want to get used to a set of panels on this side that you typically work with. The one panel that is always there and you will work with the most by far is this layers panel. This is where we can bring in, um, you know, so right now I have a background, I, ha I have layers. Let's look at the layers that I have. I have the Bing aerial imagery layer. Um, I have a rendering of OpenStreetMap called the HDM layer. If I turn that on, it's going to go ahead. Now this is a rendered version of that data and I can, I have a data layer. So um, JASM has a real distinction between these things that are just imagery layers and then there's something that's called a data layer. And this is live data that you have, you know, generally like in my case, I downloaded from OpenStreetMap and you do a lot of, um, let's see, maybe I can make that thing wrap up. Maybe I can't. But you do a lot of downloading. You know, you're typically using, I use this button that says download. That's what loaded this data. I made my edits. I made my fixes. I connected up the roads that didn't share a node. And then I would go through the process and say upload. Okay, well, I don't have any changes to upload. But that's essentially what's going on here. And so in the layers panel, um, you know, you can't do any editing or drawing on an imagery panel. 
Um, and you might work with multiple data layers, depending on what you're doing. Typically just one is that you're concerned about, but there's reasons to have more. Um, and then here's another layer. This one, you can also move these up and down. So there's also one that's called validation errors. And this changes the rendering in JASM. So if I check that, um, and I turn off a couple of these other layers, let's see what happens. Yeah, well, I don't know. Um, oh, because I don't, I, I, who knows why. But anyhow, these might very well have been rendered differently when I was doing my validation. I'm going to get rid of that layer. It's not really germane. Data layers and imagery layers. So when it comes to imagery, you know, we have a built-in imagery menu. These are taking TMS endpoints, WS, WMS endpoints, and WTMS endpoints. That's all this is. It's a collection of those and I add them or remove them from my layer. So I have the Bing layer up. I might very well want to look at the Digital Globe Premium layer. Learn the keyboard shortcuts to like turn these on and off. I don't know them, but um, they're very useful for you to be able to look at multiple imagery layers while you're doing any kind of mapping. Um, a note on imagery layers is for hot projects, we will typically be designating an imagery layer as this is the layer to go by. So we might very well say Bing aerial imagery, that's the imagery to go by. Um, and so if you had to do any kind of an alignment with mapping or get a couple of uh, imagery sets aligned, um, the, the right answer is use Bing to do that. And Bing may or may not be the most well geo-referenced layer. However, it's by far the most widely mapped from layer. So, you know, and it's generally pretty good, frankly, where we work oftentimes Bing is very well aligned, but you never go wrong if you, you know, use Bing as the, anyhow, so imagery layers. Um, let's see if I can get that to go away. Anybody have any questions? Any, any questions so far? Not yet, but thank you. Okay, yeah, just like I said, interrupt me. You know, I'm just trying to give you kind of a high level overview of the interface. Um, without specific tools. Um, so I just want you to get this layers panel is key and you know access to imagery and other renderings you know so like if you were aligning imagery I have a Strava cycling and running heat map that I can lay on here so now if I needed to align imagery or mapping I can kind of get a little bit of ground truth data but the layers panel is going to be your friend. Um, you are, are going to always want to find layers that help whatever sort of activity you're doing. And then just pay attention to the fact that there's a data layer and that's really where you can add it. I have a question on the data layer. Okay. It's not organized, it's just one layer, polygons or lines, points or transportation, Gen environment, it's all? Generally that's true. Yes, absolutely. Generally that's true. However, um, what you can do is, and this is highly advanced, um, but we'll do it because we're all highly advanced. There's an expert mode um, under preferences. Make sure you all turn on your expert mode for sure, because some of this you might not find unless you do that. However, so exactly what you said, what I would do is I'm going to zoom back into this area because there's, you know, actually this is not too bad. Let's see what happens. But you'll run into, you know, download limits. But I'm going to go up to the file menu. I told you I used the download button. If you use the download button, it's everything. It's just all the OSM data. But if you come up to the file menu and you say download from overpass API, um, I can say, okay, so I use a slippy map. It's, it's my view portal area is exactly what it transfers to. And I can say, um, you know, I want in, in OpenStreetMap language, uh, we have values and keys. And so I want everything that has or the key of highway. And I'm going to say equals, and I just want any value for that highway key. So I'm just going to use the star. And I say build the query. This is, you know, whatever. It's going to find every node, way, and relation that's a highway. Um, and you'll have to learn, like OpenStreetMap, you would learn what this syntax is. Highway is the one, right? Highway equals whatever. And then building equals whatever. And then 10,000 others. But that's the data model for OpenStreetMap is organic. Um, I know that highways are going to get me highways. And I say download. 
But what if you're trying to uh, clean this up and there's high there's highways that are mis mis uh, tagged? You should tag them. You should tag them the right way. But they wouldn't come up in the query then. That's right. Yep, yeah, that's absolutely right. Okay. Yeah. So there are QA tools. Yeah. So I can put in a. I could do that exact same process, and I could say, you know, is a way. You know, there's there's a set of QA tools that will look for things like that. So like when I run this, val I can run validation on here, coincidentally enough. Um, when I download all of the data, when I just use the download button and I ran that validation process, it will identify any ways that are untagged and give you a warning. So that's one QA tool where, that's why we have that project over Florida, is because we want people to QA Florida. And one of the checks is that you have ways with no tag um, or one of these crossing ways you'll get a warning you know way crosses away and then you'll go look at it and it'll, one of them will be a non-tagged road and they don't share something so there's QA and there's also automated QA tools that could be in the master class about that you can run and then get specific problems and go through and fix them all there's map roulette puts up particular kinds of problems and so but that's all open street map community we're I'm gonna focus on jobs one thing I want you to notice is you just asked me that, hey, what if I wanted to download all of the roads? And I said, no problem. And I downloaded. The original issue you had was I had all of the data for a small area and I didn't just have a roads layer. What I want you to notice over here is I just downloaded all of this data and I still only have one OSM data layer. Mm -hmm. So I just mixed that previous layer and this layer. And that would not be the right way to do it. So what I want you to be aware of anytime you're doing something like that, and this, this is also available if you just click on the download button. You know, when I wanted to give this gentleman a highway layer, I should have checked download as a new layer. Mm. And now when I download, I'll get a data layer that's only the highways and it's not mixed in with the other stuff. So if I just wanted the highways, then I would, you know, and I can just delete this layer. I don't need that data. I really just wanted the highways. So now I just have the highways. But that's why I'm saying this layers panel is, you know, it's kind of key to your existence in JASM. And you need to pay attention to which data layer you're working on. And that's this check mark. Mark. I can't do any editing here. All my remember these are actions and tools. All of them are grayed out if I'm on an, an imagery layer. Um, but when you're on a data layer, and you should pay attention to which one you're on these tools are active and, and you know, you're ready to get in here. So I'll tell you what, let's just for fun. Um, I'm going to go over here. Remember this bottom half turns on and off your panels and I'm going to check it. Right. And so I would just say validation. I don't have anything selected. If you have one thing selected or a set and you say validate, it'll validate that one thing. So make sure this is another one of these, you know, next most important panel. This is the panel that show when you have something selected, this is the panel that shows you all of the key value tags that are on it. So this one has highway, right? That's why it's here, because we searched for highway equals whatever, and this one is residential, plus additional data. It has a name field, key is name, you know, very common to have a name. We don't get this data a lot, but you know, it's good data. This is US, so it's all this tiger data. So this is probably from a tiger data import. This is tiger, okay. Yeah, this is tiger. So you can click on any one of these and see that. If I, you know, this is the next most important panel. It's called like the selection panel. But just for entertainment value, um, I, you know, I came over here and I turned on and off my validation panel. And I'm just going to ask JASM what it sees with that data that we downloaded. This is that's, a, that's the whole data or just the screen? Uh, what's in the screen? Just yeah, just what's in my screen. Okay. So if I zoom out, you'll see the hash mark thing. Um, and it takes a minute. So this is, you know, doing unconnected highways. And it's a lot of data that we downloaded. So it's going to take a minute to run. So I don't, I don't think I can do, maybe I'll have to cancel. But it's only the data that we downloaded. And it's going to come up with a thousand errors and warnings. It'll be interesting because um, it's not going to, so typically when we do these projects, that's why we download all the data instead of just layers. Because, you know, volunteer geographic information scheme like we have with OpenStreetMap, uh, you know, it's people make mistakes. So having all of the data is typically pretty important 
rather than working on individual layers from my perspective. Um, I'm not gonna do that, it's taking too long. But so let and me do my- Blake, can I ask a question real quick? This is Leslie. Are you gonna go through the steps of like checking out the data or, you know, a square and then getting it into this? I'm happy to, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely, yep. Um, so I, I'm going to do, that's what I'm going to do now then. So I, I'll just note that if you're downloading data while you're working, you know, this kind of thing, but let's do one out of our tasking manager. And I'm, so I'm just deleting all of the layers that I have here. And like I said, if you're, you know, particularly good at keyboard shortcuts, they exist, but this is what JOSM is going to look like to you when you first start up. And you can see your panels aren't there. You don't have any tools. This is what it's going to look like. And so, um, you know, we have a tasking manager. So we, I'm going to look at projects for Irma. This makes most sense, I think. Um, and so right now, what this mapping is based on, the people who are doing this are the most new mappers that are in this whole process. So this is where we send folks who have never done mapping before or have done mapping before. This is where we send them. And these are the projects that we have running. If you use UMAP, you can see a UMAP of all of these, but you know, we kind of manage, we try and keep people focused on a project to get it completed um, and validated. And then we move on to the next one. So we're always trying to manage priorities, but this is our tasking manager. So if I were to arrive here, it says, please focus here after 3537. So 3537 is the one that HOT wants us to focus on. So that's the one I'm gonna pick. You know, so the color coding scheme here is green means two people have done a pass at this mapping. One, a new mapper, and two, an experienced mapper, and they think all this data is okay. Uh, gold means anybody has mapped this. So a beginner has mapped it, an experienced person, we don't know. But they said they've, they've done everything in our instructions. And in this kind of mapping, it's most accessible for people to map buildings. Um, so that's typically what we do. Um, uh, if we're dealing with roads, that's for more advanced mappers. So just so you know, that's the difference. Um, so we're going to look at a buildings project because this is exactly what a new mapper would get. Um, so I'm going to pick one that nobody else is working on. You know, try and pick one that doesn't have somebody working next to you. This this is a bold outline. Gra that's really close to where I was working. <laughs> is it? Okay, well, grab one in the middle of, you know, nowhere. <laughs> and say start mapping and then you're going to say edit with JOSM and so now it's turned over to JOSM and what we have is at the moment all I have is the data layer and so it's turned me over it made the the, the area that I'm going to work in isn't hash marked so this is the task square that I'm responsible for that task square matches up with this square here that I'm responsible for and what I'm agreeing to do is map all of the buildings that I can find. So that's what I've done. I've checked that out and I need to map all of the buildings that I can find. Um, so I don't have an imagery layer. Uh, I would check the instructions. These instructions should tell me which imagery to use. Um, but read the instructions. I don't see a note about imagery. And if there's no note about imagery, it means Bing. So I'm gonna go back over to JOSM. I'm gonna go up to my imagery menu. Bing will always be in your imagery menu. You can add any WTMS, TMS server you want, but Bing is always, and so is Digital Globe. These are always gonna be there for you. So I'm gonna use Bing because that's what you should use unless somebody says otherwise. And, um, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, so I'm gonna, go, I need to open up a layer panel here. Um, let me see, I'm sorry, I need to open up. Please forgive me. You can, sometimes it doesn't work on the first time. That's just the way it goes. Okay. Um, I'm using a wireframe, but typically your renderings are gonna look like this. So you can have multiple renderings if, you know, for how the data is displayed. Um, I'm now gonna use the, you know, the default. This is what it should look like for you default. I was previously using just the wireframe. There are others. This is the one that's focused on humanitarian data, the, the, you know, our data model renders the data a certain way. 
JASM renders the data a certain way. You can have any rendering you want. And I shouldn't, this isn't advanced, you know, when you're just on wireframe, it's advanced. So I'm just gonna go back to JASM. This is what it should look like for you. And I'm gonna close this panel up because we're never gonna visit it again. So I know I need to, you, I'm sorry, go ahead. How do you open that panel? Where on the left, which one on the left? On the left, it's this one that looks okay. like an artist's palette. Yep. Okay. If you can't identify the icon, click on the, the double arrows where it gives you the list with the name. Okay. Honest to gosh, I don't know what, you know, I wouldn't recognize the icon. So I tend to click yeah. the double okay. arrows so I can see a list of the names. Um, so one of the things that, so I need to map buildings. You know, a comment that I'll make is this task square is way too big. You know what I mean? So if I look at the area that I'm responsible for, for mapping buildings, this is hours worth of mapping. Yeah. And that's not cool. That means that this project is not created right. The task squares are too big. But we're going to use it for now. But what I, what I would do if I were mapping, I'll tell you, if I, what I, I would stop. I would delete these two layers, and I, this is too big. And I would, I would stop. And I would go back to the tasking manager. And I have an instruction that says, use the split link if a task square is too big. That's what I need to do. That one's too big. Um, some, some of the tasks I saw were, didn't allow you, like this one. Doesn't, this one, yes. Doesn't allow, doesn't allow you to split. Right. And so that means that this project is just not super well created. Uh, okay, so um, you don't have the option to split it then? I don't. I can okay. do it twice. Somebody's already done it twice. You know, these are already smaller task squares than these giant things out here. So somebody's already taken one that was that big and split it two times, quartered it twice. So, yeah. But that's what I would do. So I can't do that. So I'm diving back in. So I'm saying edit with JASM and it flips, you know, downloads my data. Um, since this is all I can do, then this is what we're going to do. Um, but just know, gosh, go away. But just know that it means that the project is not well created. Hey there, Blake. Can I ask a question real quick? Please. Um, so if we run into a situation like this where we're new and we don't want to have something this complicated to start out with, I noticed that there were three tasks for Florida. Um, I know that they said that they wanted you to start on this one first before going to one of the others. But if you're new and you want to start on something a little less, you know, beefy as this, can you go to one of the other areas and feel like that's okay? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, please map where you're comfortable. And I mean, I will point out, I, you know, I have purposely picked the worst one. I knew this was going to be terrible. Not, not project wise, but task square wise. So like, even if you just look at a regular, I mean, we'll just, this is a diversion. I'm sorry, but I will just point out that, um, if you're new, like even just picking a task square that's not in downtown, you know, like this thing is giant, but there's probably nothing in it. You know, we're not going to learn anything. So I'm going to say stop mapping because I didn't complete my task square. So I'm just going to say stop. And now that one's released. Somebody else can work on that one. Let's go see what's over here. Now, granted, this one is gold. Somebody already mapped it. But generally on the outskirts of town is much easier mapping than downtown. So don't, so feel free to go out here to the outskirts of town and get another small one. And, and that might be, um, but as long as there's a building in here, we can work with it. Let's see what that one looks like. Okay. So let me get my imagery again. Bing. Okay. Well, it's a lot of buildings in this one too, <laughs> but this is, but we'll work on it. Right. I mean, if you map five buildings and that's all you have time for, that's fine. Somebody else will check it out. I mean, you can see why it's a problem, but these are just all way too big. But this is fine for showing you how to use JASM. If you have JASM, you need to have this buildings plugin tool. Um, I had a hard time. Sorry, I had a hard time using that. It seemed to only square make things square. Yeah, couldn't get all the different. Uh, right, right. But hold, I'll show you. Okay. So yeah, it basically, but it also does some nice things. So. We'll go over how to install this if you need help installing it. But the short version, uh, there's no short version. You should go to edit preferences, plugins, and install this. But I'm just going to demonstrate it now. And we can either do that when we're all done. I'll go through with you and make sure you have it or at, um, sometime in the very near future. So, yeah, typically, you know, to map a building, you know, you just click along the long side and give it a footprint like that. Mm -hmm. 
um, in this, for these kinds of buildings, that would be okay. That's not wrong. Ideally, I would, I would be, I mean, you know, you're not gonna, I don't want, you shouldn't capture architectural detail, please. You know what I mean? Let's try and stick with the building footprint and leave the architecture. So we don't, we're not worried about the, cause I've been worrying about all the little, uh, at least the, it, you whatever should. the. Yes, I mean, you, I, it's up to you, right? This is okay, better. I'm gonna show you how to make it better. So I just drew my rectangle over the whole square foot of the building. And your favorite friend is, in these instances, is the X key. Tap that X key, um, and that's for cutting. So I can cut this here. I added a node to cut that building, and I can just drag this piece in. And now this is much better. This, you know, now we're starting to get a little bit better as far as the footprints go. So the easiest way to make complicated shapes is to use this X tool. I mean, if you want to get, like I said, if you want to worry about the architectural detail, you know, you can get it exactly like it is. And you just add the points where you want to push or pull a wall by double clicking okay. with this X tool and then push or pull it in. So you do recommend using this tool for this type of these, because I, I started on this tool and then I saw I couldn't really uh, get the real form. Yeah, but I, right. Now, All your building mapping, use the building tool for with okay. one exception. Notice something else that's happening here. This is another nice feature of the building tool. I can, you know, if I get the building tool, I can, you know, draw whatever I want. However, I'm gonna, you know, I'm using the S key. I use a lot of keyboard shortcuts. Um, you know what, let me just, that reminds me. I don't know if I have it here. Okay, well, I'll try and call out my, my keyboard shortcuts since I don't have something that'll shadow them for me. Um, but I, you know, I use the S key a lot. That gives me the selection tool. Um, I'm just going to delete this. But if you click on another object and then you get your building tool or then you use the building tool, it will automatically restrict them to being, you know, uniformly at the same orientation at the very least. Now, granted, these curve, so it's only going to work for a couple. Um, but it's a nice feature, like up here where I need to do 50 in a row, keeping, you know, those these can go pretty fast. Whoops. I'm sorry I don't have a mouse. Try and use a mouse. Can you just copy and paste? I mean, you, you can copy and paste. If you feel like it's copy and paste, yes, you can copy and paste. That's no problem. In mapping like this, you could copy and paste and it would work out just fine. In, in, in a lot of mapping, it's nowhere near this uniform. And so by the time you're copying and pasting, you have to resize too. It turns out not to be worth it. You know, yeah. I, would, I can map this building, you know, almost... almost um, you know, almost faster than I can copy and paste it. I mean, maybe not. Uh, where it pastes, it'll paste at the pointing of your mouse. That'll center it there. So, I mean, you know, so this one is a little bit different too. You could, I can't really do flips, but control and um, with the selection tool, which is the S key, these are the tools. And you're just not gonna see me click up here. I can click up here. This is the selection tool. And while I have that, I can do like control and shift and, you know, I could, I, I'm sorry, I could rotate it, but I can't. Yeah. Flip. The other thing that I could do is. I can't flip it. Okay. I can't flip it. But okay. I, the other thing you can do is control and alt and you can, you know, at least scale it. Yeah. Um, but I can't flip it. But I, I can have a quick, that. quick question on the data. Um, I mean, I know that uh, Collier, Collier County, this is Collier County, right? They've, They've already got this all mapped out in their county planning offices. Is that, there's no way this can be like imported from some, or is it just too close to the? Um, you know, the, a, the, the answer to that question is, um, you know, there's, you just have to make, first of all, doing an import is, you know, pretty complicated. So that's yeah. not going to be like, so uh, the truth be told, OpenStreetMap US, yeah. who are highly skilled at, they know these data sets. There's a Microsoft data set that covers all of Florida that's apparently pretty good for building footprints that they generated somehow. And so they're in the process of doing that. If you can identify an openly licensed footprint set, you're perfectly welcome. It takes like a week to go through the process. Mm. And if you rush it, it can take like, well, it takes, let's count out a week. 
if you can identify the data set and, and show that it's openly licensed and it doesn't conflict with OpenStreetMap and it can go in there, you can absolutely run an import. Yeah. You don't have to do this individual mapping, but we're going to concentrate on the individual mapping. Yeah. But the answer is yes, and it's ongoing for some data set from Microsoft, but that doesn't get run. That's not going to be on my tasking manager. Yeah. My tasking manager is for what people who are brand new can do. Mm -hmm. um, you would be in the OpenStreetMap US Slack coordinating a building import. That's not the kind of crowd mapping. So I am doing that, by the way. Yeah. Uh, but okay. it's not the kind of crowd mapping you're going to get here. But yeah. the answer is yes. If you can identify an open data source um, and it's good and you want to go through, I mean, it's going to be like downloading 50 at once, looking at them and then saying done, and then downloading another 50. And yeah, I'm saying it's done. That's kind of the import process. I'm going to keep mapping. Um, so install the buildings tools plugin and then use the X key. That's the main. That's well, I, okay, that's great. Um, sometimes this is the right thing. Sometimes it's not. And then you know X key and just like I said, I would avoid architectural detail. But if you can get the footprint right, that's great. Um, and so sorry, I, I, have, I have just one more question because yeah. yesterday I was working on my own Cuba. And I had a really hard time telling the difference because all the roofs and the Bing imagery was not that clear. So I had a really hard time telling where which one building started and one building ended. Yes. This is very clear here. Yes, that's exactly right. You are exactly right. That's the vast majority of the mapping that we do. This, what you're looking at here, never. Yeah, that's amazing. Because we don't map in the U.S. typically. It just mm -hmm. so happens that we are mapping in the U.S. because it's a major issue. Mm -hmm. um, but typically we're mapping in some place like Cuba where this is impossible to do and it's, you know, really hard and you have to get really used to just following roof lines and figuring that the corner of the roof is here and that's a proxy for the building footprint. If they share a wall, they, you can share a wall. I could come here and I could draw the next building. If you look at them and they clearly share a wall, they can share a wall. If it just looks like they're, um, if it just looks like they're, their roofs have, you know, literally five centimeters between them, then just draw it in there and, you know, try and get the individual footprints because the count of the buildings is pretty important, even if the footprint's not exactly right. Yeah. Um, that's essentially, honestly, that's true for all of this. For, from our perspective, oftentimes, um, you know, the trying to enumerate the buildings is as important. You know, we could just drop points on here. That's valid mapping too. Yeah. We could just be dropping points. It's just in our in our context of like Africa in particular, they get so much more value out of the footprints um, that it's worth it for us to have people try, even if it's very imperfect, mm -hmm. map footprints in, in very hard to map areas because they use it for like calculating how many gallons of spray they need to take places. Crazy stuff. Okay. Like so anyhow, but yeah, this is not what it normally looks like. I mean, I can go do a Cuba project if, if anybody, if you feel like that. But, um, you know, use the building tool and S key to get your select and then delete. And so, uh, you know, so that's great. I mapped in two buildings and that's all I have time for, unfortunately. So I'm going to go, I had this loaded for me automatically. If you'll recall, you came out of the tasking manager, you said edit with JASM. And when we showed up at JASM, we essentially, you know, had this data downloaded for the area that's not in the crosshatch. So I never had to click on the download button. And I never have to when we're doing our mapping. But I do need to click on the upload button. So I did, I only have time for two buildings. I checked out my square, I did my two buildings, and I say upload. Um, you know, so it's t basically telling me everything that I've added node by node and then, you know, sort of object by object. The most important thing, you know, is typically this change set comment. I'm going to save all these things up and I'm going to have to leave a comment and say what it was. And it fills in that I took this from a hot project and we're doing Hurricane um, Irma mapping, but I added building. B U I L D H S. I added buildings. Um, you know, it's good if you leave an actual note about what you did, but you don't have to. The default comment is fine. I would have put the default comment, say I added buildings because that's what everybody's doing. Um, and you can put in another hashtag if you like, for, you know, cause you're doing this as part of GIS core. You should do that. I would put in, mm. Oh, okay. this is just for fun, by the way. I mean, it's important that they know it came from this project, but you know, put in that you came from GIS core mm. and upload your changes. And there's usually this like, goes we... really well. 
you know, because you need we need to validate to, first. Well, I'll tell you, it validated everything that I mapped as part of the upload process. Um, so if you did something bad, it would give you an error, and not let you upload. Yeah, here, I'll do something bad. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to use the building tool. I'm just going to use, we have this point tool and we use it for everything. And you're either making a way by ending it. You know, if you were doing a road, you get your point tool and you just don't, you know, you just connect it to like the last road, double click to end and you're making ways. The same tool, if you're, you make a polygon, you know, so I'm just going to do the corners of this. And I'm going to try, you know, like I said, I'm not following this architectural detail, but I'll follow the footprint. And then, you know, I clicked on the same origin node, so it treats it, now it knows this is a polygon. Um, I square my corners on my polygon. Same tool, you just you use it to make ways or you use it to make polygons. In the web editor, you have a different tool for each thing. If I was going to do point mapping, if I was going to say, you know, that um, if I was going to say that was a gas station, I just double click and leave a single point. And that corresponds in the web editor to, you know, area point and line. We only have one tool, it's this add tool. Um, and so let's upload. Okay, now I'm really out of time, I gotta upload. And so it does, on my mapping, it did validation. And let's look at what it told me. It told me that I had <clears throat> an unnamed way, highway of six nodes, that's this. I didn't give it a name field. Mm -hmm. We're never going to be able to give it a name field um, because we never know the name. So you can ignore unnamed ways, but untagged ways, you know, so, and I can, you know, I can just say cancel here. I have to fix these and I make sure my validation tab is open. And so untagged ways, <clears throat> I can right click on this and say zoom to it and it'll take me to it. Mm -hmm. so this is a, that was, you know, that's just a straight line. This is the, the rendering and validation errors back up in your layers panel just to kind of mm -hmm. back. I can turn this on and off. Um, I'm gonna leave it on because you normally would. S key so that I can, uh, by the way, right, it's a right click to drag to move the viewport. Right click or left click, you know, normal click. But if you wanna mm -hmm. move, you hold down on the right button and mm -hmm. drag around. I should have said that before. So it tells me this is one tagged way. Well, that's just a mistake. So I'll just delete that. Um, and so then I would go out to the next one and I would say zoom to that problem. So now I, I don't know which problem it is. I guess it's on a, I mean, both of these are untagged. It looks like it's talking about the road because it doesn't have any tags. So let's talk about how to tag this road. Uh, I'm going to pretend that this is a path. I'm going to say that this is a walking path and you know, I see people all the time and they're, they walk this path cause I live here. So, um, the easiest way, the easiest way is all these buttons up here at the top are presets. Oh, okay. So these are presets. So these are the highway presets. Um, you just got to look for it. So somewhere one of these will say, none of these say path. I don't know why there's two. So path. Oh, path can't be applied since the selection is unsuitable. Okay. Well, I have the right. Sure. So let me make sure I have that selected. And... Let's see here. And what did I do? I, you can also get to it from the presets menu and then it's just hierarchical, but that's hmm. the same thing as these icons here. Path. Okay. So I can't fill any of this in. I'm just happy that it says highway equals path. If you knew all this data, you would collect it and put it in. If you were importing this data and you could match it up with the fields in OSM, that would be great. Your import would include that. I don't, I never know these names. I just know this is a path and I'm going to say apply preset. And so why could you, I, I didn't, why couldn't you edit any of those fields? Because I don't know any of the information. But how does it, how does the software know that? Because the software knows. So the key value of highway or the key probably of highway indicates that it knows, you know, if you have highway, you typically have, you know, it would be nice to have all this other metadata, yeah. you know, it's smart that it knows like what it would be nice to have. <clears throat> we just never have it. Mm -hmm. So that's how it knew it. that that's all it was doing was saying, you know, these keys, all these other data metadata keys typically show up when there's a highway key. So you should probably try and fill this in if you can. 
If you can't, that's okay. Maybe somebody will fill it in later. That's the collaborative. But, but they're grayed out. Didn't give you the choice. Okay, well, let me try it again then. So I'm going to delete. It seemed I'm, like it was grayed out at least. Well, let's see what happens. I'm just going to, maybe it's just, I never knew it. So this has a tag. I, I have this highway selected, and this is the selection panel. It tells me, remember, we saw this before with the tiger. Mm -hmm. This doesn't have that because I drew it. But I'm going to delete this. And I'm going to go back up to presets. I have it. So, oh, I don't have it selected. Let me get it selected. Um, I'm going to go to the, I'm going to say path. So layer, you know, I could give it a layer. So they look grayed out, but I can, it actually has some. Oh, they are grayed out. Okay. Yeah, it actually yeah. has some default values here. If oh, you I see. They are. This is really nice, you know. Okay. And so a lot, we do a lot with motocross bike paths. OSM is the best source on the planet from, you know, bike stuff. Oh, interesting. By the way. Um, because people map bike paths all the time and they give it this, and you know, this is a bike path scale, I think. Um, anyhow, yeah, if you know any of this, fill it out. Um, if, if this path were going over a bridge, I'd have to give it a layer. I'd have to say layer one, and then it wouldn't look like they cross. If it were a bridge, it's not. Um, but we use layer all the time. Highways, we also use surface. I mean, I can just show you the, you know, this is the data model. So oftentimes, you know, if, you, if I tag something as a primary, you know, that's also sort of assuming that it comes with some implicit values, like the surface is paved. Mm -hmm. In Africa, primary roads are never paved. So I have to mark it as highway equals primary, and then I have to say surface unpaved because normally you would assume paved if I was using the surface, you know, or the, the primary tag. There's as much complexity in the OSM data model as you want, but um, hmm. we use surface a fair amount and smoothness. In a disaster situation like we're in now, we, if, ever, if we have the information, we use the smoothness to indicate if the roads are passable or not. We never do this hmm. because it changes so fast. But if we did, if we had like long-term data that, you know, a road was going to be closed for years, bridge is just, you know, going to be closed for years, you could use smoothness to indicate that it was impassable. You, you could also say, you know, damage, but oftentimes we'll use the smoothness and we'll say impassable to mean this road's closed. Uh, that's just a side note. Don't worry about it. So I think I, I gave this the highway. Oh, I still didn't give it the path tag. Um, I'm going to go to presets. This is another way to find presets. If you don't want to go through the hierarchies and just find it, search. <laughs> you know, this is a path. So type in path. And it tells you there's a highway tag for it. There's a combined footway and cycle. We just want regular path. I don't, I don't know if it's a combined segregated foot. And so just path. But you can search for them too. So if you just don't have the slightest idea what the tag might be, because you're not familiar with OpenStreetMap mapping, Go to the presets menu and use search. Um, I lost where I was. I'm, I'm just going to upload again, and I still have a bunch of errors. So I'm just going to say cancel, and now I have an updated list. I'm going to zoom to that problem. Um, this is maybe, no, that's the road again. But I thought the I warnings are optional to fix, right? I still haven't gotten the tag on this road. Hmm. Uh, the nice part about, also, I'll show you, by the way, I'm sorry, I'm going to tag this. You've seen presets. Search presets. The way that I tag this road is I do Alt A. I select it and I do Alt A. <clears throat> and it brings up this dialog box, including my last 20 used tags. And here I can, you know, you can type in and it completes. Highway, path, return. And now that one's tagged. And I would do it here too. This is a building. Alt A for Alt Add. This is a building, and you see how it's auto-completing for me? Tab, yes. And as soon as it auto-completes, you can hit return. That's how I would tag this. That's advanced JASM interface. To get started, you, you're welcome to use these icons and find, you know, if you need to. Buildings are generally tagged automatically, um, and I should have mentioned. Uh, and search the presets. But typically get used to, you know, clicking on something, seeing what tags it has and doing alt a to either add the exact last tag you add you know tag things the same in a series and you just alt a return and it's just done 
How important are these tags? Because uh, and these buildings, like uh, they're not going to be calculating square footage based upon these footprints, are they? Oh yeah, they might. Yeah. And then also the lower left hand, we have uh, mobile homes, which obviously are very important in this. So is uh, it important to tag those as mobile homes rather than just residential? Well, I'll tell you. Uh, you know, don't confuse the trailers here. Try not to. Tag well, yeah, them. I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. But um, these over here. Definitely... I'll tell you what I listen the way that I would teach you to do it is I would teach you to grab the building tool and I would outline this is how I would do it I have something selected so it's restricting I have to hit escape and try this again um, I mean I would tell you to build you know to map these as you know just like that and now if I hit s for select this has the building equals yes tag just yes not because I, I would think a mobile home would be very important to know that's a mobile home. It's almost more important to know how many and where, hmm. you know what I mean, of structures. And yeah. if you want to, there might be, let me do it. Let me just, I'm going to do one by hand. So I'm just going to use the tool. Let me just see what happens. I mean, I'm sure there probably is a mobile home tag. And if you felt good about it, um, so I'm going to do Alt A and I say building and let's just look at the values. Um, You know, there, there might be a mobile home. Hmm. I honestly don't see one. There was manufacture. Oh, where's that? That's down a little bit further. Manufacture, it's in the, right there under kindergarten. Yeah, exactly. But is that a, uh, is that, I was thinking that was almost a factory, no? No, the man. I think my no. The building manufacturer, I think, are like the man. You know, manufactured homes. Okay. These actually oh, look like nice. RVs. Frankly, this looks like an RV park to me. Hmm. So, you know what I mean? Those are RVs. Those aren't even you know manufactured mobile homes are a little bit wider. These are these yeah. all look like RVs to me, to be honest. But they look like they're permanently there. Yep. Both. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Both. So building equals yes. Not going to be wrong. I mean, it, it's kind of wrong if it's really a, an automotive RV, but building equal yes isn't wrong. Okay. Building equal manufacturer, not quite. Building equal mobile home, because then the data consumer gets to decide. Yeah. Because they'll do what I did for roads. They'll grab building equal star. That's what they'll uh, grab. Okay. And then they're not usually, maybe at some point in time, we never have that data, so they never look at us for that. But sure, at some point in time, then they might want to do building equals manufacture. It'd be great if they could, but there's no way we're going to be able to mass map it, Yeah. asking people to be this fine detailed. So everything sure. is, tends to be building equals yes. Okay. Um, that's, that's just the way that this goes. You know what I mean? And so you're not getting the whole, you're only getting the foot, because this looks like it's a porch or a whatever. A, yeah, just do the, so. you know, just I'll tell you, this one. wouldn't be wrong for me. If okay. you had done the whole thing and said building equals yes, yeah. I would not invalidate that. If you did yeah. it this way, that is not wrong either. You know, you and, need to balance. Like, yeah. um, I don't want you to do it fast because good is better than quantity. Yeah. But you need to make a decision about, uh, you know, what, what the, this is a copy paste thing. I could probably... Um, but you need to make a decision about we're trying to get them done in a timely fashion yeah. um, for data that's not available any other way. And to like, you'd be surprised, like a lot of our partners, like World Bank, you know, wants this data. The U.S. is a special case. Every Cuba, let's take Cuba for an example. No NGO can get this data for Cuba hmm. except from OpenStreetMap. Yeah. So it's, it's, a, it's a weird case mapping in the U.S. because the U.S., there's still people who need this data, even in the U.S., where you can point to three data sets. Mm -hmm. They don't know where it is. They don't know how to find it. It's not in something that they know how to use. They're not you, GIS Core. And it's yeah. a lot of people. Um, so that's why if you could do an import, that's, uh, you know, force multiplier. There's an import going on for that exact reason. Um, if you have a set of skills that are well beyond um, mapping mobile homes, then those are important. But this is what we ask the crowd to do, and this is where everybody starts. 
no matter yeah. what your other set are. We all do regular mapping like this until we have a handle on it. And sure. then we start bringing our other skills in. So anyhow, that's not wrong. I don't feel like I've covered the UI very much. Um, you know, like, like I said, just to review, tools are up in this top half. The building tool is the key one that we typically use. Uh, you know, this is the add tool, and I often use A for add, S for select, and you can see it's changing the icons here. You know, the selection tool is to, to grab stuff. Um, so it gave me a warning. It said, hey, you just moved something with 20 nodes. That doesn't sound right. Mm. Um, so I say undo move and show me next time I make that same mistake. But we can talk a little bit about, um, you know, what's going on here. I'm going to get the... I'm going to keep the selection tool. So I have the highway selected. That's because I clicked on the way and I got the, the way selected. And so I have the keys and the values. I have the metadata for this way. Um, if I clicked on an individual node, there's no keys or values on that individual node. It's on the way. Um, but if I wanted to move this whole way and I accidentally just grabbed one node, then I'm just going to move that one node. Um, so make sure if you're moving something in, you know, in mass or you're building, you're not accidentally just grabbing one of these. These little pluses, I don't, I don't know that this scales on my screen here. Um, but the little pluses between the nodes, this I will add you a node. And if you look at the cursor icon, it changes. Now it's a plus and a, that's the, I'm selecting stuff and now it's a plus. So I would add a node there if I grabbed it. A node wasn't there. Um, So that's some basic mapping. But if you're doing building mapping, you don't, you know, this isn't applying to you. If you're doing building mapping, you're you're doing this, right? I mean, I don't know. I honestly I would map both of these, I guess. You're doing that, you know, and then you're just moving on to the next one and you're mapping the next building. And these are easy to do because they're pretty wide out. And just give it your best shot. Spend as much time getting the footprint right as you want. Um, if it's L-shaped or U-shaped or V-shaped, you know, map it as that shape. This even isn't wrong, even in an L shape, but, and like I said, my favorite way of doing that is then getting the X key to cut, and I would double click and I would pull that out, if that were an L shaped building. But that's typically how I do it. Um, so I'm gonna upload my data, right? I've done more mapping, I'm gonna upload my data. I still have to say cancel because I still have errors. I have this untagged way, I'm gonna zoom to the problem. So this is a house, this is a building. By the way, uh, you know, this building is crooked. I didn't really go over this. The building tool is always gonna do right angles for you and it automatically adds the building equals yes tag. I need my selection tool, click. The building tool makes them square and adds the thing. If you draw them by hand, they end up crooked with no tags. Um, fixing them, there's a Q key um, that's for, I don't know, a word that yeah, I- Yeah, I've been using that makes it square. So that you'll see a lot of unsquare buildings, especially with people who aren't using JOSM. And then Alt A, because this is a building, and that's how I add my tags, and I just double click OK, and I fix that. Um, so I can come back here. Now, what a question that came up was, if I run validation from here, this is going to validate everything that got downloaded, including everybody else's data, too. But when I do the upload process, it's only validating stuff that I've mapped. Um, that's the difference between using the validation panel and just uploading. This is actually configurable, what gets tested on upload versus what gets tested on, on the check over here. No tags. So I have an un, I'm gonna um, say cancel, and I'm gonna come over here. There weren't a lot of other errors in the existing mapping because it was my problems. This was a point that I put down that I'm gonna alt add because this is building equals yes. I just mapped it as a point. That's not the instructed way to do it, but it's not wrong. So I'm just going to add the right tag to it. Unnamed ways we can't do anything about. So that's it. Upload. Um, I say continue. And I'm going to say, I'm going to add my hashtag, this core, just because it's fun. Um, it'll be there next time. And I'm going to say upload. And I, and I just contributed to that hot project. And if I were all done, I would just delete my, you know, I would delete my layers. Let's, you know, if I'd finished, if I'd mapped all thousand buildings two hours from now, um, I would close all that up and I would come back to my tasking manager. And now I'm either going to say stop mapping. That's if you 
it didn't fill the whole square. You didn't get all the buildings mapped. You would just say, stop mapping. If you feel like you mapped every, according to the instructions, that you mapped every building in that square, you would mark it as done. And you, you know, but we didn't do that. There's no chance. So I'm just going to say, stop mapping. Another person will check this out. They'll see my mapping and they'll keep going. And that's, that's the process. And then I check out another one. I told you when you first started trying and pick task squares that aren't right next to somebody who's mapping. Um, but if you're mapping, feel free to check out the next task square up from you or over. Feel free to do your mapping in a group. Don't use the random task button. Pick yours in a group because then you'll learn. You'll become an expert in that little micro area. Uh, and everyone next to it will be easier and you'll start to see, you know, oh, okay. You'll, you'll get real familiar with it. Don't, don't use the random button. We should take that away. Okay. Um, I was, I have a question on the, the process here. Um, yesterday I was, I was learning Josem. I'd been using Potlatch. So I was on one task for a number of hours. And then when I, I checked it in and checked it out a couple times, but then I noticed that somebody else, seemed to be had been doing the same task as me at the same time and i did notice buildings that i had done and then i noticed buildings that i hadn't done so how does that work when i mean it seems like i don't know if that's an error or that but i think we were both checked out at the same time that never happens um I, don't, I just don't, I think we have this, you, two people can't check out a task at the same time. I think we have. I think so. Yeah, I think we have that part down. But, you know, open street map, so like maybe somebody was doing it, I mean, maybe not, you saw the data, I didn't, but maybe somebody's doing an import at the same time and you guys were both, because anybody can open, work on it in open street map. It's yeah, not. Yeah, I, I did time out. I noticed I did time out, but oh, also I had. Out. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, if you timed out, then, then you would have continued working on it while somebody else checked it out. I think that's what happened. Oh yeah, that's two hour tasks are a nightmare. They're, they're, they're more wrong, they shouldn't be possible to be created. A task yeah. square should take you 10 to 15 minutes. But some of those squares are impossible to do in 10 or 15 minutes, like yeah. we're seeing right here. Yes, exactly, yeah. And that's because the person who created the project is not as experienced of a project creator as um, some other people who make projects are. Okay. That's, that's what that's a function of. But it seemed to, when I checked back in, it seemed to have loaded my stuff and his, stu his or her stuff. You know, so I it seemed like it loaded both of ours. Well, the, you not, both, they might both be in the database, right? Yeah. They're both in OpenStreetMap, so of yeah. course it should load both. But there wasn't too much overlap. There were three buildings that were done twice. That's all yeah, I saw. Yeah, it happens once in a while. Yeah. It's not a big deal. Yeah, um, okay. it's, you know, it happens once, and especially like on the edge of squares, because I tell you, um, I'm gonna check out another task just for the entertainment. Well, that's another question I had too, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna, so I'm gonna, this one says review the work. I'm gonna show you, I mean, I'm gonna do the validation process. Whoops, oh my goodness, I marked that as valid. That was wrong. Um, I didn't validate it. Let's let's hope it's easy to validate. Uh, yeah, this doesn't look too bad. So let me get my Bing imagery. Um, yeah, I would tell you if you have a building that even touches the corner of your square, map it. Okay. Yeah. Map the whole building. Yes, map the whole building. These yeah. task square boundaries should not really have very much impact on your mapping as far as completeness of features go. If a building is half in and half out, map the whole building. Hmm. And when, you're, when you get done mapping a road, don't end it on this line, you know? So if I was mapping this road and I have this, I have the, I, I'm responsible for the uh, left hand side. It seems like my internet connection is telling me that, um, we're done. Can you guys still hear me? Any chance you hear me? I'm sure my internet connection is trouble. Okay. This is what, 
Yeah, you okay? So now it, it just looked like okay. Can you hear me again now? Yes. Okay. Yep. So I, I'm sorry. Before I got interrupted, I was saying you're responsible for the left half. This is not in your task square. But if you were mapping this road, you know, please don't. First of all, map it better than that, and then please don't do this. Um, you know, you checked out a task square that didn't have anybody working next to you, right? So you know that you can, um, and, and, I want to, and I want to continue this, so I'm going to click on it and just continue it. You know, feel free, you know. I mean, certainly go that far into the next one over so that person has something to start with. You know, you can, what will happen is once, at your level, once you get to be an experienced mapper, um, you know, we, roads projects we don't make very often. You might just come to OpenStreetMap and do roads validation on your own and never look at our task manager and just know that, you know, this needs to be done. But, you know, from our task manager, we're generally, I mean, we do ask you sometimes, but, and, and the other thing is, please don't map uh, this road. I give this road an F for quality because it's not connected to any other part of the network. So always make sure that any road you map should be try and connect it. Certain, like if the network was over here, into my other neighbor neighbor square, I would certainly map it to that network connection, you know, to that road network connection. Please don't do short segments that aren't part of the road network. Um, just don't map it. You know, if, if I could only see a little portion of this through the trees and I didn't know where it went, I would never, don't map that. That's not gonna help anybody. Okay. Are there more questions? I don't, I feel like this has been a little scattered as I thought it might be. Um, but I want no, this is good information. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, it's hard, you know, like I said, you're a different skill set. You have a different skill set for users. And so, you know, I, I was hoping that there would be lots of other questions that were not like super, you know, just about the basics. But I wanted to try and use those questions to show the basics of the UI for even somebody who, you know what I mean? So I hope that worked out. I have more time. I'm, I'm perfectly happy to stay. It's your time that I want to make sure that I honor properly and feel like, you know, what can I do to make sure that, that uh, you have, you feel like you could go and use JASM. I don't want you to go away unless you feel like you know you could go and use JASM to do one of these projects. I had a quick random question. Okay. Um, going back to the beginning when you were just adding the layers and you were setting, like you were doing the option for the query. Let's say if you were adding the different layers like let's say you had it separate so you added the roads by itself then you added buildings by itself is there a way to rename the layers in the in on the side oh yeah so you know yeah you can right click jasm is it's got a not a great user interface but you know it's quite good in a lot of ways um so try right clicking on stuff but yeah i can come down here and i can say rename layer and i could call this roads it's not but i could Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I can save this, you know, I can save it and load it later. Um, you know, that's more, don't do that. Don't save it and load it later unless you know what you're doing um, because then the data is going to be unsynced, you know, and I can sync the data. If we're in the middle of mapping and it's taking two hours, you can come up here and you can say update data and this will then find any, okay, so first of all, it tells me something. I, so it did its validation and I have to say cancel and I have to go give this a, I have a warning, untagged way, 15 nodes, zoom to problem, alt A, this is, this is highway equals track. This is a, you know, deciding what to classify these as roads is extremely, you know, there's, um, I'm happy to do, all, that's a whole separate literal half hour discussion about how to tag, our, how to tag roads. Um, but I would tag this as a, I would tag this as a track. This is the view you need to be out on if you're, if you're tagging roads with values. This mm. is the level that you tag them from. You don't tag, you can't figure out, I can't look at, I can't look at this, literally, I can't look at this intersection and know, have any clue what those roads need to be tagged. Zero. It's only by, because we do all of our, the values, it's always highway is the key. Um, but the value, we, the path was easy. Um, 
But now I need to decide between, we typically use, well, what's down here? Um, what's here? It's public land or? This is track. So that's already labeled as track. I didn't really look at it, but that's also what I labeled this. So that matched. What comes out of, what's this? Residential? Okay. I mean, that's not residential road. Um, that's not residential road. But you can only tell, we, we make these des decisions based on functionality, but this is not a residential road. Residential roads, oh, shucks. Residential roads would only be, you know, for access to residential houses. This is a connecting road of some sort. In my world, this is called highway unclassified. Hmm. That's a classification. And unclassified, and I'm going to change it. I don't even care. I'm going to change it. This is unclassified. It's not a residential road. Actually, I'm not going to change it because um, I'm not a local U.S. mapper. If I were mapping in Africa, I would change this to, um, or Cuba. If I were mapping in Cuba, I would change this to unclassified. So we try and look at the function. The reason that in my world, in Cuba, the reason this is labeled track is because it's only an ag road. It doesn't matter. I don't care if it's paved. If it only services ag, it's a track. Oh, huh, okay. That's, that's the definition of a track is it services ag. It could be four lanes. And if but it is, is there something in there that way you could at least tag it's been, it's paved? Yes. You'd add surface equals paved. Oh, surface, paved equals okay. Four. Okay. And then tag it a track. That would be the way to do that because we use a functional definition. And so the, the function of that road is access to ag and that's it. So it's a track and we have an imperfect value for it called track. Um, other parts of the world use track differently and there's grades to track Two track. You know, there are grades to track, but we never, you know, you could get, so you can say track type equals two and that means there's two ruts. Um, but let's, that's way too advanced. Um, you get my idea. So the reason, so the reason this, this road, honestly, so this road here in my world in Cuba, this road could be tertiary. I would, I would map it unclassified and it wouldn't be wrong because unclassified means connecting population centers. Tertiary means connecting major population centers, you know, large towns. And, you know, this, in, you know, if this were in Cuba, this might even be a tertiary level. You know, secondary is going to be connecting state capitals, size towns, and primary is going to be whatever their, you know, whatever their major roads are that aren't, if they have a highway system, that aren't the highway system. Um, anyhow, that's called functional road tagging. And it, we don't, we don't zoom, you can't tag a road zoomed in. This I can't, I couldn't, I mean, I can give it. I mean, really, like if I marked it path, it doesn't even need unpaved, but there's very little tagging you can do from zoomed in. You need to look at, at zoom out and see what that road does. This just services houses. I'd give that residential. This is, you know, unclassified. This just, you know, these are just track. They're only servicing ag or whatever. But that's this functional, this is all, If that's probably a berm anyway, but if it were a path, it would all, you know, be track because it just doesn't connect anything. And that's this functional mapping that we do because in many, most places of the world, there's hard to map it to something we're familiar with in the West. So, so deciding the value on a road is hard and there's a guide, right? So we have a guide and the best guide that you can possibly use is in the OSM wiki, which is an extremely valuable resource for you. The OSM wiki, this is your go-to place for anything. So type in highway because you use the highway tag. Um, and this will give you, you know, all of the keys and the values and why, right? I mean, I'm not totally making it up, but there's a lot. And this will tell you subtle differences, why it's one way, why it's another. It's not like this is undocumented. It's just not what I would ask a new mapper to do. Giscore people, it's a different story but like that's why i would never ask you to do this and so the very best reference for mapping as far as um hot projects go is this thing that we call highway tag africa and highway tag africa 
takes that existing highway road system you saw there and modifies it for contexts that are not a Western context. This is primarily developed for Africa. However, it works in any resource challenged area. Um, if you're doing BGI type mapping or community type mapping, if the local community, you know, knows what they want to tag them, that what they say goes. But so you can see tertiary, major transportation routes connecting towns and larger villages. Hmm. You know, passed with four four wheel vehicles, bicycles, foot, animal. This five to seven meters may be paved. Somebody just started adding this. That was not typically there because I don't care. I've had I've had primary roads that were two tracks and they literally ran for 750 kilometers through Mozambique. And that was a primary road and it was a two track because it was the only road for a hundred kilometers in any direction. So, mm, wow. so don't don't feel if you see physical things, don't feel bound by those. Go by the function. Un, unclassified, the worst the worst classification in the world. Minor collector, this collector roads is new terminology too. You could, I don't even know what that means. My, you probably do. Minor roads that allow travel and commerce um, from paths and residential roads to and between settlements. To and between settlements is the key phrase. Connects up small settlements. Generally not residential. Yeah, no, this is not like only access to houses. This is doing a function of, of between settlements. So that's how I describe it. Residential is primarily housing. T track, access route from dwellings to agricultural and forestry areas only. So, so Highway Tag Africa does, I mean, I think it used to do a better job of explaining it functionally without um, jargon, but somebody's jargoning it up, I can see. And that's the nature of the wiki. But use the wiki. Um, another thing that might be interesting to you is something called tag info. Dot, I don't know what it is, tag info dot openstreetmap.org. Um, so like I said, we kind of focus on these keys. So I'm just going to type in highway again, just for, you know, because that's the tag we've been using a lot of. Um, and so this will tell you what's in the database. Um, I guess my connection is pretty bad, but this will tell you what's in the database and how many of each value there are for that key. And it will also tell you related keys. So this is the highway tag. There's, you know, 117 million in the planet file. And the values, you know, 31% of them or 37 million are tagged as residential. I'm surprised service is so high. That's for driveways, parking lots. Track, 13 million are track and classified. That gives you a sense. Combinations, you know, it'll tell you like if you have that key, there's a the next most common thing people have is a source, a surface, and tiger. So these are typical other values that go with it. So maybe this is of more interest to you, but it has nothing to do with JASM. How, how do we feel about JASM? I'm gonna stop recording. I, I'm gonna take the last- Can you go over how to add the, the building tool before you stop the recording? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm just gonna get rid of these so I don't accidentally map. I tend to. I'd also like to add a, um, ask a question about imagery. Okay, can you hold on one second while I fix whatever? So this is telling me that I have, un, I'm trying to just delete this layer, my roads layer, and it's telling me that I have unsaved changes. So I don't remember what those are. So before I upload or delete, I have to say cancel, and I'm gonna do the regular upload, because I don't think I did anything wrong. I think I only made improvements. So I'm gonna say upload and I modified, yeah, I changed Savile Palm Road East, changed into unclassified. Did I do that? I forget. And I'm gonna add GIS, so I have, so it remembers that I had added my tag for GISCOR because this is GISCOR mapping. Um, it also is automatically saying what imagery I had loaded at the time. Um, so it's automatically filling in Bing as the source. We didn't really go over that. You can add new tags. So you can see also with this save, it's gonna um, say that, it, you know, the creator. So it's, that's the software you used. And I used the English locale and the source is Bing. So there's other tags being added automatically in the background that you might not be aware of. Um, 
but generally this is what you're going to see and you're going to do your change set comment because it's cool and you know the imagery will usually be right i'm going to say upload changes and now i could delete this data layer because i'm going to move on to something else but let's keep it and answer the imagery question um, that particular tile that you were working in, it had a lot of cloud cover. And you said before that Bing was the go-to imagery. So yeah, that's an excellent question. If, yeah, if that's we run into a case where we a tile like this, which, an which one would we go to next? Like, which would be the next best? The Digital Globe Premium. Okay, great. Thank you. And, you know, please don't ask me, and you'll get this message that says it may be misaligned. I'm sure it's misaligned. I don't need the message. Um, but it's off by a couple of, you know, a couple, the satellite companies, as far as they're concerned, offsets of, you know, one to three meters, that's well aligned imagery. So when we get the imagery from the satellite providers, a one to three meter variance between any layers, you should just expect because that's considered well registered. You know, this doesn't look too bad, but that's what's considered well registered for the satellite company. So expect one to three meters between imagery. And um, yeah, that's about what this is. So what you would do is like, if you can't see the bill, so, so this is what you do, by the way. Yeah, this is excellent. This is what you do in these cases, by the way, where I can't map here because it's cloud covered in Bing, right? Pretend you can't see that. But I can map it here in digital globe imagery, but the offset's wrong. That's what this button is all about. But how do we know which one's better? What's that? How do I, I don't care which one's better. Hmm. I just, what I, like I said, one to three meters, it's all a tie. Yeah. I mean, if you want to get like your best tool, if you really care about that, but I don't, your best tool is to get the imagery layer and look at the Strava cycle, you know, see if there's anything see if they have any see if they have any traces and if you want to pick between digital globe and set and bing and decide which one of those is better aligned using that actual gps track for one to three meters go for it but i don't care and i suggest that you don't care too um so you'd leave that building alone no i'm i, mean, I, I lost that building now i'm going to tell you what i what i would do to it is um i would adjust the background imagery to match it because I want the relative offset to stay the same. Oh, okay. So if yeah. I, like this was mapped with Bing. Okay, let's, we'll just do this. But it's incomplete because there's two structures next to it. They did a bad job, but I can't see them in the Bing imagery. The Bing imagery is way too cloudy. Can't work with that. I would come here and I would use this button. And I would say that I need to, I'm working on the digital globe premium layer. So I need to adjust the digital globe premium layer. And this is a crap, this is the only kind of buggy dialogue they have is, but just ignore that for now. And you come over here and you click and you adjust the background imagery so it matches the existing mapping. And that's the offset that it has, two by six meters or whatever. I don't even know what those units are, but that's fine. And then I would come in here and I would get my building tool because these, I see two buildings on each side of here. You know, these are run-in sheds or they're feeding, whatever. And I would add those two buildings and I'd be proud of them. And I don't know, I would pick my Giscore thing. And I don't know which one was better aligned, but the relative offset is now this, you know, now the relative offset is right. Because you can, at scale, I can fix an overall offset at scale, but I, only if the relative offsets are all the same. So in this instance, you always just adjust the background imagery to the existing mapping, do whatever mapping you need to do. And at some point in the future, somebody will at scale, you know, try and make it more precise. But literally one to three meters, that's the level of precision that we have. And, and that's what the satellite companies say. So that's, you know, you're gonna get that kind of variance. Definitely. Like yesterday, I was having problems in Cuba, and I had a screen open with uh, Google Maps imagery just because I couldn't really tell the outlines, and so I had to use that to eyeball the Bing imagery. Or I was eyeballing the Google to verify the Bing. Don't use Google. 
Just don't. But even just to figure out where the building ended. Right. Don't in any way, shape, or form make use of Google, even in the most of obscure or unassociated way. Just don't have anything to do with it. And then it's cool. Why is that? Because I wasn't able to see where that building was. And then I looked at the Google screen and I could if see you it. You can't get it. So there, we have Digital Globe Premium. We have Digital Globe Standard. Yeah, I went through them all. Yeah, right. So, and then Mapbox. Mm -hmm. um, and then let's see here. I haven't updated my imagery, but Esri's in here somewhere, right? Esri World Imagery. That's, wow, Esri World. That's, pretty, that's really good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyhow. If you can't get it figured out between yeah. these, then you just can't get it figured out. Yeah. And you can't look at Google. You can't get a clue from Google. You Why is that? Because of their licensing. No, but if I'm just eyeball, just looking at it. It doesn't matter. If really? you're huh. using Google to inform, to get exact placement, or help make it the right size, or just know if there's a building there, you're generating data that is derivative of Google's imagery product. Oh, that's interesting. So it is that strict. You're generating data. You will have yeah. generated vector data using their imagery product, even if all you do is just, even if it's on your, your partner's laptop and you look yeah. at your laptop and say, oh, it's a square building. And then you come over here and make it square because you couldn't tell if it was round or square. Then you just, you just did a derivative work from their imagery. And that, wow, it's even that, uh, that uh, huh, it's interesting, okay. That's how NAS, see, people say like the open source licenses are really viral or what have you, but it's the private licenses that just spoil data instantly. Mm -hmm. You know, everything people contribute to a Google crisis maps, I can't even look at. It's not mm -hmm. licensed for me to look at. Wow. Because I want to be mapping evacuation shelters. And if you put it in a Google crisis map, you just told me I can't map it, literally. So we beg people to, you know, but you can, you know, granted this is not for everybody, but this is why we beg people to put things in open street map. Because once it touches Google, then I just can't even look at it. You've just ruined it for it. I have to go find it somewhere else. And you know, you know what I mean? And I even ask people, cause we'll do this, it'll happen. Somebody will go out and they will personally survey 10 or 15 shelters and they'll have a csv of that shelter list with latin longitude if they mm -hmm. sent that to me it'd be a dream because they generated it they can just give it to us and i'll put it in for them yeah the only way the guy would transfer it to me is he said i, I put it in this google crisis map get them out of there and i just said huh. i can't i just can't even though you generated the data and it's your you just don't have the cvs file anymore I can't, I just couldn't, I couldn't map them because you would put them in Google Maps. I can't use that. I can't derive anything out of the imagery. I can't take anything that has coordinates. Yeah. I, you know, the copyright on the, even the rendering of it, just cut off from me to be in strict compliance. And we try very hard to be in strict compliance. Yeah. Because we get the license from all these other people. And the only way that we get access to imagery is by, you know, I mean, OpenStreetMap takes licensing really seriously and that aggravates a lot of people. But we do it for two reasons. And the one reason is so that people know that we're going to respect whatever we say we'll do if they license imagery to us. And two, um, there's a second reason that I don't remember. But we're pretty tight on license. Oh, two, the data consumers. Now, whoever consumes this data, which can be used for commercial purposes, We've given them the highest quality assurance we can. This is unencumbered data. You can mm -hmm. use this and do whatever you want with it. And we know it's unencumbered because we have these really strict guidelines. Yeah. And that gives business owners the confidence that they can use this. And it's not just some crazy internet project. You know what I mean? That adds a certain level to it that we're so strict about the license. Yeah. So it, it benefits okay. in both of those ways. Okay. Yeah. Um, does anybody have any more? Oh, we're going to do. Um, anybody have any more questions before I show how to install the buildings plugin? Actually, I have a question on the buildings because I saw there are two plugins, and one didn't get loaded, and the other one, the one you have, did get loaded. Okay, well, let, we'll look at that. Let's find okay. out. Let's see why. So I'm going to go to edit my preferences. And remember, I think you're going to always want to make sure you have expert mode checked on because it hides and 
it hides options if you're not an expert. So I might tell you about something and you can't find it, and it's because you don't have expert mode turned on. Um, so I, you could, you should, you know, pick through these. You could take a look at them. You probably already looked at the one that got your login stuff working. Um, it's there's just a lot in JASM, and it's not, a, you know, it's not a dream for UI. Remember, we talked about how you could style. I was rendering the stuff different in real time. Mm -hmm. I had a rendering that was JASM. I had a rendering that was HDM, and then I had wireframe on my data. I mean, this is the list of, of renderings that they get shared on the internet. So you can say, I'm going to work on lane details and right-hand traffic. And when you download the data from OpenStreetMap, it'll be rendered in a way that emphasizes that stuff because that's what you're going to work on. Highly advanced JASM. I just, the point is I encourage you to explore the um, preferences. But we're going to go down here to the one that looks like a plug into the wall because this is where the plugins are. Generally, the first thing you want to do if you're just installing JASM is you'll want to say download the list. And this goes out on the web and gets a list of all the publicly contributed plugins. These are all open data. The, you know, being an open source project like we are means that people create hundreds of cool things to make our work easier. So we have hundreds of plugins. And in the search box, you're going to type in building. And there's, I don't know, I got a bunch of matches, I guess. Um, but the one that we're concerned with is this one called Buildings, to Buildings Tools. And don't worry about the version. And just put a check mark next to it. Mine already has one because it was installed. But make sure that has a check mark next to it. And then the Install button is really the Update, update Plugins button. So you would click on Up. If you hadn't installed it before, this installs it. So you put the check mark there, and now you're going to say update plugins. And now I tried to install that building generalization too, but it wouldn't install. Oh yeah, let's see what happens. I don't recommend using this tool. Okay. No, hold on. I take that back. I don't recommend that I use this tool. I don't know what it does. Um, the <laughs> buildings tool is the one that we need to okay. draw those buildings good and fast. If you want to download a different plugin that sounds interesting to you. And it like me like it, like ninety degree stuff matters to you because that's for some reason that's what, go ahead and install it and so I check the box and I say update plugins and it says JASM version ten three five eight is required and so it will let you download it or skip the download and um, my recommendation is you skip the download and you upgrade your JASM that's what I would do. So I would say skip download, and then I would just upgrade my JASM. So it tells me it failed. Is that the, that's the error you got? I think so. I got something I like okay. that. But after you do that for the buildings process, you know, so you set update plugins, and then this is not good UI. I, because I don't think I can click. Oh, I can't click on OK. I don't know why it says it's downloading the buildings generalization plugin. I thought I can't. Oh, yeah, I'm telling you, it's not perfect. Skip down, oh, cancel. Ah, JASM. It's quite good, frankly. I'm a little embarrassed for it. It's usually a little better than this. But that's how you would have installed the plugin had everything gone right. Um, I would suggest you just install buildings underscore tools and leave buildings generalization out of it. Especially since I don't know what it does. So I'm probably, you know. Oh. Okay, wants me to restart JASM, sure. By the way, you notice that JASM restarted. Had I had any unsaved data, JASM would not have restarted. You know, okay. to delete those layers below, disable the plugin, be done. Um, it would have told me if I had unsaved data. And that's it, that's the, I'm gonna call that the end of this JASM training. If anybody who watched all the way to the end has questions, there's comments in YouTube, and then there's also, you know, several Slack channels, including the Discourse Slack channel. Um, you can ask questions in there and somebody will point you to me. And I'm happy to do this one-on-one -on -one with anybody who also, you know, has other questions or extra training. And so with that, I'm going to... Um